Welcome to the Madison Motor Podcast. Today is Monday, June 3rd, 2024, first podcast of June. We have NHL Conference Finals games to go over. From the weekend, we have baseball, WNBA, soccer, golf, NASCAR, French Open. All right, so we're going to do a fun gimmick this week because there's not a lot going on. Big regrets over the past decade for every big four professional sports team. And today we'll do the NFL. News and notes and best bet. We'll start at the conference finals in hockey. We have two games to go over. Or talk about take that back. Three games to go over from the weekend. So Friday night, Oilers over the Stars 3-1. They take a 3-2 series lead. And then Saturday, Panthers over the Rangers 2-1 to advance to their second consecutive Stanley Cup final. As the Panthers win in six games. And last night the Oilers beat the Stars 2-1 to one to wrap up that series in six games. As they go to their first Stanley Cup Final in 18 seasons. So the Stanley Cup Final will be Oilers-Panthers. I'm sure there was probably some people that had that preseason. But I don't think anybody had that in November or even December. But here we are. Um, a lot of storylines in the series. And we'll preview and predict the series on Friday, and then I'll give out my pick for the series on Thursday, but I'll, I'll preview game one on Friday. Um, so post-mortems for eliminated teams very quickly. Uh, the Rangers will start. Um, the President's Trophy curse continues to live on. Um, they had a really good regular season, but just couldn't get it done when it mattered in the postseason. Um, some may call this season a very big fail. Some may say it's a slight failure. Others may say it's a success. I think it's a somewhat of a failure because you were the pre- they're the Rangers. You won the President's Trophy, and you didn't make the Stanley Cup Final. So I'm a, I'll admit I'm harder on the teams I root for than other teams. Um, I'll tell you what it's a more dis or more of a failure than uh, the Knicks. That's for sure. Even though they went further than the Knicks. But there's the difference between the two with the circumstances. Um, so this core continues to uh, crumble when it matters. And I think that this core could get broken up. Not in its entirety, but some. And what I mean by that is like they trade somebody to a team to where their core hasn't gotten it done. So it's just like distressed asset for distressed asset in the way. Or in a nicer way, we say change of scenery for change of scenery. Like, for example, like Lafreniere and, or not Lafreniere, um, Panarin and Capo Caco to Toronto for Mitch Marner and something. Or Zabanajad and Capo Caco to Toronto for John Tavares and something or something like that. Those are good examples. Or even they could look to trade with the team that. Lost in the Western final, the Dallas Stars, who um that's obviously a failure as well. If they didn't get to the Stanley Cup final either. They had high expectations. They were the one seed in the West and they failed, so it's a failure. And they had very high expectations going into the season, especially from yours truly. Um so you can't change the coach if you're at Dallas. I think I think Peter DeBoer's done a good job. So maybe you just shake up the roster a little bit. And maybe you flip some guys with, like, maybe there's some Rangers trades or some, uh, maybe look around Colorado. I don't know, that wouldn't make sense because they want to cop with their group. Um, Vegas does make sense as a trade partner. Maybe Winnipeg, you could look to trade with them. Uh, Toronto, Boston. Um, so... They have some options for, like, little change of scenery trades. I mean, both teams have some free agent stuff to take care of. But that's what I think the Rangers and Dallas will both be back in contention next season. Um, I think the Rangers might have a little bit of an easier path than people think because Carolina's going to take a step back with all the free agents they have. And obviously the West is going to be tougher. The Blackhawks are up and coming with Bedard. I don't know if they're going to be good right away. But they're obviously no slouch. Um, Edmonton's going to be there. 
Vegas will always be there. Colorado's getting Landis Cog back, so they're going to be better. Um, Winnipeg may still have Hellebuck, so that's a force to be reckoned with. And in the East, you're still going to have your usual suspects, except I think Carolina takes a step back. So the Panthers are the team to beat in that conference, and they should be. You're still going to have Toronto maybe with some changes. Boston's still there. Um, I don't know about Washington and Pittsburgh. They're a little bit of unknowns. I think Carolina takes a step back with free agent stuff. Um, the Devils should be better with um, Sheldon Keefe there now. The Islanders are lingering. So I think both teams will be back in the mix next year, but um, maybe with different looks per se. Okay, now move on to baseball. Um, we have games to go over from the weekend, and we have games to look ahead to for today. We'll start for Friday night. Reds over to Cubs 5-4. Phil's over to Cards 4-2. O's over to Race 3-1. Jays over to Pirates 5-3 and 14 on a two-run walk-off home run by Davis Schneider. Mets over to D-backs 10-9. Red Sox over to Tigers 7-3. Marlins over to Rangers 8-2. Guardians over to Nats, 7-1. Braves over to A's, 4-2. Brewers over to White Sox, 12-5. Twins over to Strohs, 6-1. Royals over to... Our Padres over to Royals, 11-8. Mariners over to Angels, 5-4. Rockies over to Dodgers, 4-1. And the Yankees over to Giants, 6-2. Saturday, Pirates over to Blue Jays, 8-1. O's over to Rays, 9-5. D-backs over to Mets, 10-5. Brewers over to White Sox, 4-3-10 on a... Walk-off infield single by Willie Adamas. Red Sox over to Tigers, 6-3. Strohs over to Twins, 5-2. A's over to Braves, 11-9. Padres over to Royals, 7-3. Rangers over to Marlins, 7-0. Guardians over to Nats, 3-2. Mariners over to Angels, 9-0. Cubs over to Reds, 7-5. Phillies over to Cardinals, 6-1. Yankees over to Giants, 7-3. The Dodgers over to Rockies, 4-1. Sunday. Twins over to Astros 4-3. Tigers over to Red Sox 8-4-10. Braves over to A's 3-1. Rays over to O's 4-3. Jays over to Pirates 5-4. D-backs over to Mets 5-4. Rangers over to Marlins 6-0. Nats over to Guardians 5-2. Brewers over to White Sox 6-3. Royals over to Padres 4-3 to dodge the sweep. Reds over to Cubs 5-2. Um... Mariners over the Angels 5-1. Yankees over the Giants 7-5. Juan Soto hits the go-ahead home run in the ninth. The Giants should have won that game, but they cratered. Um, Dodgers over the Rockies 4-1. And the Cardinals beat the Phillies 5-4-10. and So the Yankees, do they have the best record now? Yes, they do. Holy crap. The New York Yankees have the best record in baseball. Holy crap. Did not know that until now. Well, that was um a done deal after the Phillies lost to the Cards. All right, not a lot of games on Monday, which is today. Brewers fills 630. Bryce Wilson, Zach Wheeler. Going to be an interesting pitching matchup. Um, Phil's my 10, Brewers plus 176. So the totals are not out yet. And neither are the run lines for... Um, FanDuel, neither are they for ESPN bet. Why not take a shot with Milwaukee at plus 176 on the money line to kick things off? Mets, Nats, Tyler McGill, Mackenzie Gore. Nats minus 122, Mets plus 104 over under 8.5. Overs plus 104, unders minus 128. Mets minus 1.5 is plus 62, Nats plus 1.5 is minus 96. That's going to take the Mets. At plus 104, there's some value there. Um, 7 o'clock, O's Jays. Grayson Rodriguez, Kevin Gossman. O's minus 124, Jays plus 106, over under 7F. Over's minus 122, under's even money. O's minus 1F is plus 130, Jays plus 1F is minus 156. 
That's a hard one. But I'm going to say this is a bounce back spot for the O, so I'm going to lay the run line. Minus one half at plus 130. 8 o'clock, Tigers, Rangers. Tariq's Cabal and Nady Evaldi. Tigers minus 116. Rangers minus 102 over under 7 half. Overs minus 132. Others even money. Tigers minus 1 half plus 150. Rangers plus 1 half is minus 182. I like the under, and I don't know why the Tigers are favored here. I would, I really like the uh, Rangers too, but I'm going to go with the under because I don't know. It might be a Vegas nose. All right, Cards Astros. Kyle Gibson, Justin Verlander. So battle of two disappointing teams, although the Cardinals have kind of turned it around a little bit lately. Astros minus 164. Cards plus 138. Over under 8.5. Over is even money. Under is minus 122. Cards plus 1.5 is minus 150. Astros minus 1.5 is plus 125. I'm going to go with the over. Don't feel good about it, though. 8.30, Reds, Rockies. Andrew Abbott, Ryan Feltner. Reds minus 134. Rockies plus 114. Over under 10.5. Minus 170. Right? Reds minus 1.5 plus 114. Rockies plus 1.5 is minus 37. I like the under. 9.30, Padres, Angels. Matt Waldron, Tyler Anderson. Padres minus 3. Angels plus 110. Over under 8.5. Over is minus 106. Under is minus 114. Padres minus one half plus one twenty six. Angels plus one half is minus fifty four or fifty two. My bad. Although Waldron's pitched better for San Diego, but I, Tyler Anderson's pitched well for Angels. I'm going to take the Angels plus one ten. Last but not least on Fox Sports One, Giants D backs. TBD Ryan Nelson. D backs are minus one thirty six. The Giants are plus one sixteen. I'm going to go with the Giants at plus one sixteen on the money line as a dog. Now move on to the WNBA. Um, we'll go over the results from the weekend, and I don't know if we have basketball tonight. We do not. Friday, Liberty over the Mystics, 90-79. Dream over the Aces, 78-74. Sun over the Wings, 72-74, or vice versa. Lynx over the Mercury, 95-71. Saturday, Commissioner's Cup, Fever over the Sky, 71-70. Sunday, Commissioner's Cup, Liberty over the Fever, 104-68. Commissioner's Cup, Sun over the Dream, 69.50. Commissioner's Cup, Mercury over the Sparks, 87.68. And Commissioner's Cup, Lynx over the Wings, 87-76. to Snow W until Tuesday. All right, now move on to soccer. Um, we'll go over the notable results from the weekend and look ahead to anything going on today. We'll start with MLS. All right, Friday. NYCFC over San Jose, 5-1. Saturday, D.C. Toronto, 2-2 draw. Miami St. Louis, 3-3 draw. Red Bulls over Orlando, 1-0. Philly, CF Montreal, 2-2 draw. Chicago over the Galaxy, 2-1. Mini over KC, 3-1. New England over Nashville, 2-1. Salt Lake over Austin, 5-1. LAFC over Dallas, 1-0. Portland, Houston, 2-2 draw. Vancouver over Colorado, 2-1. And then yesterday, Charlotte over Atlanta, 3-2. All right, the Champions League final. Real Madrid beats Dortmund 2-0 to win the Champions League. So congrats to Real Madrid. The goals were scored by Donny Carvajal in the 74th minute and Vinicius Jr. in the 83rd minute to put Dortmund away. So congrats to Real Madrid. Great run. And Dortmund had a really good run for themselves as well. All right, French League 1 relegation playoffs on St. Etienne and Mets was a 2-2 draw, but St. Etienne wins 4-3 on aggregate. So congrats to St. Etienne, their promotion, Mets relegated. Syria, Fiorentina over Adelada, 3-2. Um, I'm just going to double check to see if there's more soccer to go over because obviously um, not a lot going on now. Um, so Friday, uh, women's friendly, Australia, China, 1-1 draw, Japan over New Zealand, 2-0, Argentina over Costa Rica, 2-0. Saturday, women's friendlies, Canada over Mexico, 2-0, Brazil over Jamaica, 4-0, U.S. over South Korea, 4-0, and Chile over Guatemala, 6-1. And then we had a, 
Um, U.S. Cell to go over. Um, Saturday, Hartford, Rhode Island, one draw. Loudon over Tulsa, 3 0. Louisville over Miami, 2 1. Indy over Pittsburgh, 2 1. Colorado over Oakland, 1 0. Birmingham over El Paso, 3 1. San Antonio over Memphis, 1 0. Orange County over Detroit, 3 2. Tampa over Sacramento, 1 0. Vegas, Phoenix, 0 0 draw. And then yesterday, Monterey Bay over New Mexico, 1 0. All right, so we do have some soccer today. Coming up really early this morning, Australia, China, women's friendly. Um, Australia minus three hundred, China seven to one. The draws plus three sixty. We'll do under two and a half goals plus one twenty. Japan, New Zealand. We also have as well as tonight at seven o'clock, Argentina against. Costa Rica. Some friendlies today. 12 o'clock is Gibraltar and Scotland. Scotland's 40 to 1 favorites. Gibraltar 60 to 1 dogs. The draw 17 to 1. I'm going under 3.5 goals plus 122. 1 o'clock is Croatia and North Macedonia. Croatia's minus 380. Macedonia's 10 to 1. The draw is plus 380. Let's do under 2.5 goals minus 108. 2 o'clock is Albania and Liechtenstein. Albania is minus 2,500. Liechtenstein is 65 to 1. The draw is 11 to 1. Let's do over 3.5 goals at minus 106. England against Bosnia and Herzegovina. We don't have... Oh, we, we do have that. England minus 50, Bosnia 15 to 1. The draw is 7 to 1. Over three and a half goals, even money. And last but not least for international friendlies is Germany, Ukraine. Germany, my sweetie, Ukraine, six to one. The draws plus 370. Under two and a half goals, plus 134. We we're supposed to have FIFA World Cup qualifying between uh, Tanzania and Eteria, but that got canceled. So that's really it for soccer. And now we'll move on to golf. Um, we'll go over the results from the Canadian Open. Your winner with a score of 60 under was Robert McIntyre. Second, 15 under, Ben Griffin. Third, 14 under, Victor Perez. Tied for fourth, 13 under, Tom Kim and Rory McIlroy. Sixth, 12 under, Corey Connors. Tied for seventh, 10 under, Mackenzie Hughes, Ryan Fox, Matt McGeeley. Tie for 10th with 9 under, Chandler Phillips, Sam Burns, Keith Mitchell, Joel Dahman. Tie for 14th with 8 under, B. Hossler, Michael Kim, Aaron Rice, Scott Stevens, Andrew Novak, Carson Young, and Jacob Bridgman. Tie for 21st with 7 under, Taylor Pedro, Tommy Fleetwood, and David Skins. Tie for 27th with 5 under, Sean O'Hara, Stuart Sink, Jonathan Vegas, Matt Wallace, Thivjorn Olison, and Trevor Crowe. Tie for 33rd. With four under, Shane Lowry and Vincent Whaley. 35th tie, three under, Nicholas Hojard, C.T. Pond, Ryan Palmer, Pearson Cooney, Ben Silverman, Sammy Valbaki, Rio Hisatune. Tie for 42nd with two under, Nate Lashley, Nate Hardy, Evan Van Royen, Adam Scott, Mark Hubbard, C.A.U., Grayson Higo, Harry Hall, and Kelly Craft. Tie for 51st with one under, um, Gary Woodland, Joseph Bermatt, Adam Spevson, um, Lucas Griffin, Jason Headley, and Adrian DeMont de Chazard. Tied for 57th with, at even, Kevin Strillman, Mac Meisner, and Miles Creighton. Notable side for 60th, one over Ryan Morash K. Bahita, 62nd tie, two over Brandon Wojo and um, Jorge Campillo. 65th tie, three over Vincent Norman, Chazard V, Eric Barnes, 68th, five over Kevin Tway. And among those cut, Grayson Sieg, Troy Merritt, Roger Sloan, Trevor Whitney, Cam Young, Alex Wren, Matt Trainer, J.J. Spawn, Hayden Buckley, Zach Johnson, Austin Cook, Adam Hadwin, Parker Cooney, Wesley Bryan, Dylan Wu, Nate Taylor, Seamus Power, S.H. Kim, Brad Snecker, Martin Blair, or I'm sorry, Michael Blair, um, 
David Thompson, Cam Champ, Luke List, Martin Laird, Ben Taylor, Matthias Schmidt, Sean Kim, KH Lee, Justin Lauer, Kevin Doherty, Eric Cole, Camilio Vegas, Charlie Hoffman, Adam Long, Sahid Thiglia, Harry Springer, Max Graserman, Michael Glidjek, Matt Neesmith, Davis Lipsky, Henrik Norlander, um, Kevin Chappell, Bryce Garnett, Callum Tarrant, Kevin Kisner, Daniel Berger, Pat Gazier, Sam Ryder, Tyson Alexander, Paul Barjan, and withdrawing Doug Gim and Yachen Yuan. All right, now we're on the NASCAR. We have results to go over from the weekend. We will begin with the truck results from Gateway. Your winner is Corey Hine coming in second. Is Christian X, third, Nick Sanchez, fourth, Ty Majeski, fifth, Lane Riggs, sixth, Chase Purdy, seventh, Ben Rhodes, eighth, Stuart Friesen, ninth, Andres Perez de Lara, tenth, Luke Fenhaus, the rest, Tanner Gray, Danny Dye, Ty Dillon, Dean Thompson, Tanner Ankrum, Roger Carruth, Brent Effinger, Timmy Hill, Lawless Allen, Matt Crafted, Brett Holmes, Connor Mozak, Matt Mills, Jake Garcia, Vicente Salas, Spencer Boyd, Keith McGee, Thad Moffitt, Bailey Curry, Taylor Gray, Mason Massey, and Colby Howard. Xfinity from Portland, your winner, Shane Van Gigsbergen. So a surprise winner at Portland here. Coming in second was Justin Algier, third, Sammy Smith, fourth, A.J. Allmendinger, fifth, Eric Jones, sixth, Cole Custer, seventh, Josh Williams, eighth, Parker Kligerman, ninth, Parker Ritzloff, tenth, Riley Herbst, the rest. Austin Hill, Josh Baliki, Sheldon Creed, Ryan Sieg, Austin Green, Brennan Poole, Ryan Ellis, Kyle Sieg, um, Jesse Love, Blaine Perkins, Nathan Bird, Garrett Smithley, Andre Castro, Patrick Gallagher, Kyle Weatherman, Lawless Honeyman, or Leyland Honeyman, Ryan Truex, Sam Meyer, Logan Bearden, Jeremy Clements, Matt Stevendetto, Anthony Alfredo, Haley Deegan, Saja Karam, Chandler Smith, Brandon Jones, Jeb Burton, and Preston Partis. And the Cup Series from Gateway, your winner. Austin Sindrick, second, Denny Hamlin, third, Brad Kozlowski, fourth, Tyler Riddick, fifth, Joey Logano, sixth, A.J. Dillon, seventh, Chris Bell, eighth, Carson Hosvar, ninth, Justin Haley, tenth, Kyle Larson, the rest, Ty Gibbs, Ross Chastain, Chase Elliott, Chris Boucher, William Byron, Todd Goland, Chase Briscoe, Daniel Hemrick, Zane Smith, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Bubba Wallace, Noah Grax, and Daniel Suarez, Ryan Blavy, Michael McDowell, Eric Jones, John Hunter Nemechek, Alex Bowman, Ryan Priest, Derek Krause, Harrison Burton, Corey LaJoy, Cody Ware, Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, and Josh Berry. Okay, now move on to the French Open. We'll go over the results from the weekend. And look ahead to today's matches. We'll start in the men's Friday, and I apologize if we went over some of these results already. Three seed Colossal Caras over 27 seed Sebastian Corda in three. Quarantine Motet over Sebastian Ofner in four. 21 seed Felix Algaras Salam over 15 seed Van Shelton in three. 10 seed Grigor Dimitrov over Zuzu Bergs in four. 19 Stefano Sipias over Zizan Zhang in three sets. 8 seed Herbert Hukas over Denis Shapolov in four sets. 2 seed Janik Sinner over Pavel Kodov in three sets. And Matteo Arnaldi over 6 seed Andre Rublev in three sets. That's a pretty big upset. All right, third round finished up on Saturday. 1 seed Novak Djokovic over 3 seed Lorenzo Bassetti in five. So, Djokovic had some trouble there. That's really interesting. Um, 7 seed Casper Rudd over 28 seed Thomas Echeverry in 4. 12 seed Taylor Fritz over Thanasi Kakiakis in 
five, 23 seed Francisco Sarandula over 14 seed Tommy Paul in four, 13 seed Holger Rune over Joseph Kalvik in three, four seed Alexander Zverev over 26 seed Talon Greek Sport in six, I'm sorry, in five. Um, I was looking at the, the box score. Um, five seed Daniel Mavedev over Thomas Makach in four, and 11 seed Alex Demeter over Jan Leonard Struff in four. Fourth round began yesterday. Two seed Janik Center over Korzin Mota in four. 10 seed Grigor Dimitriov over 18 Hubert Herkaz in three. Three seed Carlos Alcaraz over 21 seed Felix, Felix Algaraz Salama in three. Nine seed Stefano CPS over Matteo Arnaldi in four. All right. We're going to give out bets actually now that we're into the fourth round. I actually have time to do this. So, 6 15 this morning. You have 11 seed Alex Demeter in 5 seed Daniel Mavedev. Great matchup. Mavedev minus 182 with Demeter plus 150. I like doing set betting. And I'm going Mavedev 3-1 plus 350. 9-30. 12 seed Taylor Fritz and 7 seed Casper Rudd. Rudd's minus 250. Fritz is plus 202. I'm going to go with Rudd 3-1, plus 290. 10 o'clock, Wazi Novak Djokovic and 23-team Francisco Serendulo. Djokovic minus 880, Serendulo plus 580. I'm going Djokovic 3-0, minus 110. And then 215, 4-seed Alexander Zverev and 13 Holger Rune. Zverev minus 265, Holger Rune. Plus 215. I'm going to do Zavera 3 0 plus 190. All right, women's from the weekend. Friday, third round. One seed Iga Swiatek over Marie Buskova in two. 18 on Shapur over 31 seed Layla Fernandez in two. Five seed Marketa Vondrasova over Chloe Paquette in two. Clara Tawson over Sophia Kennan in two. Anastasia Potapova over Ziyu Wong in three. Three seed Coco Goff over 30 seed Diana Yastremka in two. Olga Danovic over Donovecic in three. And Elizabeth Cochorado over 17 seed Lumila Samsonova in two. Saturday, third round. 22 seed Emma Navarro over 14 seed Madison Keys in two. 15 seed Alina Svilina over Anna Bogdan in two. Mira Andreva over Peyton Stearns in two. 12 seed Jasmine Paolini over Bianca Andrescu in two. 2 seed Arena Sablanca over Paula Bedosa in two. 4 seed Alina Rabakina over 25 seed Elise Martens in two. Barbara Gracheva over Arena Begu in two. And Alina Evan Sion upsets tw- upsets seven seed Quinn Zhang in three. All right, fourth round began yesterday. Eight seed Ange Jabor over Clara Tawson in two. Three seed Coco Goff over Elizabeth Cacharetto in two. Five seed Marketa Vondrasova over Olga Danovic in two. And of course, one seed Iga Swiatek over Anastasia Potapova in two. And it was 6 0 both. So those are very impressive box scores for Swiatek. Perfect fourth round. All right, early this morning, 5 a.m. 15 seed Alina Svilina over four, and 4 seed Elena Rybakina. So, Alina and Elena. Really fun. Rybakina minus 275. Svilina plus 215. I'm going to go Rybakina 2 1. Plus 470. Wait, was that right? Rybakina 2-1, plus 280. I read the wrong number, sorry. 12 to Jasmine Paolini and Alina Avasayan. Paolini minus 335. Evan Sane plus 270. I'm going to go with Paolini 2-0. I know that's minus 135, so... Total match games, 20 and a half. We're going to go over, minus 112. Um, 
Um, all right, 6-15, 22-seed Emma Navarro and 2-seed Irina Sablanka. Sablanka minus 360, Navarro plus 280. Navarro, I'm sorry, Sablanka 2-0 is minus 35. So, total match games. We're going to go under 20.5 on this one at minus 118. And 8.15, Ververa, Gracheva, and Mira Andreva. Andreva minus 410, Gracheva plus 375. I'm going to go with Andreva 2 1. That's 3 to 1. I think Gracheva wins a match. So, or wins a set. So, I'm going to go Andreva 2 1 at 3 to 1. to do the segment that will be the gimmick of the week called biggest regrets of the decade in terms of the four major professional sports today we'll do the nfl and this is from 2014 on summer of 2014 on all right so we're gonna go in Alphabetical order by team. Um, Arizona trading up for Josh Rosen. Um, obviously, this set them back because what happened the next year, they'd go and pick Kyler Murray. So they just proved that that was a mistake right off the bat. And meanwhile, you could have just had a veteran in there instead and then pick Kyler Murray the next year. Or you um, wait and uh, trade back into the first round and take Lamar Jackson, who was the best or second best quarterback in the class behind Josh Allen. Some may argue the best. Others may say second best behind Josh Allen. Um, The Falcons of Atlanta. The Kyle Pitts pick. Um, Kyle Pitts is not what the Falcons think. Or thought he was. Or think he is. Um, He's not even as good as TJ Hawkinson. I think that Brock Bowers is going to be a better tight end than Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts was a great college tight end. But he really hasn't worked out in the NFL. And Atlanta just ignored their needs on defense. Ignored the fact that Matt Ryan at the time was washed and tried to build around them, kind of like what the Giants did with Eli Manning, ironically, in the uh, same decade. Um, the Baltimore Ravens um, passing on Amon Ross St. Brown in the draft. Um, I think that this is a big one and a bigger one that people think because Hollywood Brown didn't work out as a WR1 and they missed on a lot of other wide receivers too and if they were the team that picked the Monroe St. Brown in the fifth round and they passed on him in the fifth round and lucky Detroit got him for them but um if they had a Monroe St. Brown maybe the Ravens would be holding up the uh, Lombardi trophy that's how strongly I feel about this. The Anamon Ross St. Brown. That's their WR1. The Buffalo Bills. Losing Stephon Gilmore in free agency. Um, This was a long time ago, but now looking back, it's like, yeah, like, should have kept them. That could have been a difference-making player for your team. And your defense was the unit that would always crumble against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, and say if he had Gilmore with Trey White in that secondary, who knows? It's kind of like the Ravens with the WR1. But Buffalo, it's um the other cornerback with Trey White. The Carolina Panthers trading up to select Bryce Young. I mean, someone would say taking C.J. Stroud instead of Bryce Young um, should have been the case, but 
quite frankly, they shouldn't have traded up for that pick anyway. Because there's an alternate universe where they stay at nine, pick a defensive player, and they keep DJ Moore. And then you get the number one pick this year and take Caleb Williams. And you have Caleb Williams, DJ Moore, and the and the good foundation, kind of like what the Bears have now. So, like, there's that alternate universe that they don't trade up and give away DJ Moore to draft Bryce Young. That's a really bad trade. The Chicago Bears trading up for Mitch Trubisky. Um, this was an easy one. Because you to pick Mick Trubisky over Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. So, yeah. But more Mahomes, though, obviously. But um, the fact that you traded up to get him and it didn't work out, like, tells you all you need to know. Like, that was a big mistake. Not only did they make the mistake of trading up, they picked the wrong guy. The Cincinnati Bengals, the John Ross pick. John Ross was one of the bigger wide receiver busts over the past decade. And the Bengals could have picked any other good player in that draft. Instead of John Ross, who is a speed guy and just in it. work out they could have gone with um oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong draft it, it wasn't 2015 it was I think 2017 they took John Ross because they did that thinking that Andy Dalton was still the answer yeah they passed on Marshawn Lattimore, I mean, obviously Mahomes, but that's okay, Dave Burrow. Hassan Reddick, Marlon Humphrey, Jonathan Allen, um, Trey White, David Njoku, TJ Watt, duh. But they passed about a lot of good players. They were one pick shy of Christian McCaffrey. But yeah, John Ross was a huge bust with uh, Cincy. Alrighty. Um, the Cleveland Browns, uh, the Deshaun Watson trade. Um, they That's only because they gave up so much. And they paid him a lot of money. And he got suspended and he got hurt. But if he comes in this year and it's awesome and leads the Browns to a Super Bowl, that it's not a regret anymore. Meanwhile, there's an alternate universe where they actually keep Baker Mayfield and they still have the same success and they don't have to deal with old Joe Flacco. Um, Although he did win comeback player of the year, I'm still bitter that he won comeback player of the year over DeMar Hamlin. DeMar Hamlin died on the field. Like... And Joe Flacco, old quarterback that led the Browns to the postseason. So, um, very interesting. Um, the Dallas Cowboys, this is a fun one. Um, passing on TJ Watt in the 2017 draft. This was a huge mistake. Passing on a generational defensive player. This is another pick where if they had him, they maybe they... I don't know if they would have won the Super Bowl in the Dak Prescott era. But they would have been in the conversation. They would have probably made a NFC Championship game. They passed on TJ Watt for Taco Charlton. Like, there is... Um... A lot of the alternate universe where they have TJ Watt, Demarcus Lawrence, and Micah Parsons. I know then they, their money would have been an issue. I understand that, but maybe they um, don't keep Demarcus Lawrence and have TJ Watt instead with Micah and 
build their team around them. So that's a big mistake now looking back. Taco Charlton over TJ Watt. Um, the Denver Broncos. The Russell Wilson trade. They just gave up so much in that trade and then they released him. And he was literally the uh, the fallout person for their defense being bad. I don't think Russell Wilson was that terrible last year. And I don't know how he's going to be on the Steelers with Mike Tomlin. It's just that him with Sean Payton was a bad fit. And the roster wasn't even good anyway. But they gave up what turned out to be the fifth overall pick in the draft. And Seattle goes and takes um, Witherspoon, who's going to be a perennial um, Pro Bowl cornerback. I, I know Denver already has Patrick Sertain. But Sertain and Witherspoon together, and theoretically if they don't trade for Russell Wilson or they could have even picked the quarterback if they didn't trade for Russ and say they started um Drew Locke and they still probably would have had like a top five pick anyway so um bad trade the Detroit Lions the Jeff Okuda pick he was on the bigger busts in the NFL in terms of top five picks over the past decade for sure this guy was thought out to be a surefire perennial Pro Bowl player. Best at the position. And there was a lot of other great players that the Lions could have picked. And if they don't win a title in the Sherrod Goff era, that pick, looking back, they go, oh yeah, they picked Jeff Okuda. Over Derek Brown, who's a pro bowler now. They picked him over... I know, granted, their offensive line's good. They picked him over Andrew Thomas. They picked him over Tristan Wirfs. I mean, there was a lot of busts in this draft. I mean, Jerry Judy's not a bust, but he's a good player. Maybe they could have traded back and got something. And took in one of those guys I just brought up. So, very um bad pick by the Lions. That sent him back a little bit. The Green Bay Packers not trading Aaron Rodgers sooner. Um, if they traded him a couple years sooner, they would have gotten more in return. They could have gotten a first round pick. Instead, they got the pick swap with the Jets, and then they got what was a second round pick because he blew out his Achilles. So. Aaron Rodgers' injury, in theory, was bad for the Packers. And I think they should have traded him sooner. And the other reason why I think they should have traded him sooner is because I don't think they realized that Jordan Love was this good. And I'm not saying that they would have been a contender for the Super Bowl with Jordan Love like I think they are now. But they could have repeated the same success with the talent they had with Jordan Love than with Rodgers. They could have gone to the second round like they did this past year. And they had Deon, uh, Devontae Adams at the time. I mean, that trade wasn't terrible now looking back. Um, we all thought it was, but I don't think Devontae Adams is as good as he used to be. So, um, maybe uh, he they got what he was actually worth. Um, the Houston Texans. Not trading J.J. Watt when he had value. Um, J.J. Watt, I think, was cut by the Texans, if I'm um, not mistaken. And if they traded him, they could have gotten a lot back for him. Like, say, when they were bad. And they just kept him because he was a... Uh, um. So they kept him because he was J.J. Watt and he was the best defensive player they've ever had. Quite frankly, they should have traded him when Deshaun Watson got hurt and and then they could have gotten something for Watt. 
So, um, like I said, I'm not a fan of when players get released. I mean, they could have gotten, like, what Aaron Rodgers got from uh, Green Bay for Watt. I mean, that would that's something. At least Green Bay got something for Rodgers. I just think they should have gotten more for Rodgers. So, yeah. He's too good not to get something in return, J.J. Watt. Um, the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I had a hard time picking this one. Then I realized, oh yeah, they traded for Carson once. And they gave up a, a, they gave up a first round pick and they didn't even make the playoffs. That's because Wentz played a majority of the snaps and they still didn't make the playoffs. And that, that's a bad trade. Bad job by the Colts. That set them back. Um... The Jacksonville Jaguars extending Blake Bortles. I mean, some may say the actual pick of Blake Bortles, but what quarterback were they picking over Blake Bortles? Or which player were they picking over Blake Bortles? I mean, they needed a quarterback at the time. So there's another team, a couple teams later, that some may say, why not the pick itself? But doubling down on it, because you made the AFC Championship game and beat um, an aging Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers made you think that he earned that contract extension. Meanwhile, that was fool's gold. So the Blake Bortles extension. Meanwhile, that season, that was 2017. Meanwhile, they could have been the team that traded up for Patrick Mahomes instead of the Chiefs. Or no, that's the that was the next year. So I'm sorry, Lamar Jackson. They could have got they could have picked Lamar Jackson. Although to be fair, now they have Trevor Lawrence. So um, granted they haven't been past the second round with Trevor Lawrence yet, but um, yeah, that was a hard one to pick. So that was the one I came up with. Um, next the um the Kansas City Chiefs. Passing on Puka Nachua. This is a big deal. I almost picked this for the Buffalo Bills, but I said, I'm like, you know what, that's more of the Chiefs. Because, obviously, Rasheed Rice is in legal trouble. Um, and the other receivers they have are either old or washed up or can't catch the ball. And Kelsey plays tight end, not receiver. So, if they had Puka, and say they took Say there's an alternate universe, they take Puka in the fifth round and address cornerback in the second or third round whenever they pick Rasheed Rice. I know, granted, they would have had more receiver issues, but or there's a world they have both Rasheed Rice and Puka. And Puka, they, they finally find, is their replacement for Tyreek Hill. And um, granted, I know they just won back-to-back Super Bowls and are going for a three-peat. But they got away with bad receiver play for most of the year. And if they picked Puka, they would have had their WR1 for the next 10 years. The Las Vegas Raiders, the Cleveland Farrell pick. Oh my god, that was an awful pick when it was going down. And it's even worse looking back. Players they passed on. Josh Allen of the Jaguars. Devin White. um, Rashawn Gary. Ed Oliver. Brian Burns. Dexter Lawrence. Jeffrey Simmons. Most of those players are on the defensive side of the ball that I just listed. Christian Wilkins, who ironically signed with the Raiders. I mean, they could have traded down and picked one of those guys, and then somebody could have jumped the Giants to take Daniel Jones. I mean, maybe you're surely wishful thinking on that one, but, um... So, yeah. Cleveland Farrell pick. Terrible. Um, the Los Angeles Chargers, the J.C. Jackson signing. That was a terrible free agent signing. They cut him literally after a year. Los Angeles Rams, um, 
this was a hard one, but I came up with um, trying to convince Aaron Donald to stay around. Um, I think they're going to miss Aaron Donald. I mean, granted, they already have uh, Kobe Turner there, who is really good as a rookie. But he's no Aaron Donald. I think Aaron Donald still would have been playing at a Pro Bowl level. Granted, um, he wasn't as good as he usually was last year, but he still played at a Pro Bowl level. I think if Aaron Donald was still there, they're a Super Bowl contender. I don't know if I feel that way right now without Aaron Donald. Like, he's like a quarterback. Him and McCaffrey are like quarterbacks. The Miami Dolphins trading Minka Fitzpatrick. This um, does get ignored a lot. He was on the Miami Dolphins, and they traded him because they tried to tank for Tua Tunga Velo. Ironically, it worked out because... Um, even though they're picking fifth, they picked Tua anyway. Um, but if they had Minka Fitzpatrick, they probably still end up with the fifth pick in the draft. They could have faked an injury or um, they could have traded a different player and kept Minka. And say if they have him with Tua... Or maybe if it's not Tua, maybe they pick Jordan Love or something. And Jordan Love's a big hit, as we know, or Jalen Hurts. There's an alternate universe where um, they pick Hurts in the second round and they address a different position in the first round if they keep Minka Fitzpatrick and they don't pick fifth. So, like, or they're just as bad with Minka and they take Tua. And... He's a difference-making player. Like, if they had him, maybe they're in the AFC Championship game. Maybe they would have won that division last year if they had Minka Fitzpatrick. That's how good he is as a player. And that's a that was a big mistake by Miami for trading him. The Minnesota Vikings. The second Mike Remmers signing. Um, they ever paid Mike Remmers. Um, signed him to a five-year deal and literally um, caught him two years later. I know he started every game for him, but um, the one year, but he was also hurt. And I don't like when guys get cut off, like, two years after a five-year deal, so that's automatically a mistake in my book. It's like Russell Wilson. Um, except they acquired him and signed him to an extension. Um, New England Patriots, um, letting Tom Brady walk. Um, this one was pretty easy. Um, and that's not to say that the Patriots would have wouldn't have been that bad with Tom. The roster was bad. I get it. But Tom won a Super Bowl with the Bucs. I know the Bucs were a better team than the Pats. But there's an alternate universe. He stays in New England for a couple more years. And maybe they don't have... they The Mac Jones pick doesn't happen. And maybe they address quarterback. Maybe he retires after this year. or Or I'm sorry, after last year. And they pick C.J. Stroud or they trade up for somebody. Or I don't know, maybe he retires after 20... Maybe he retires after 2021. And then they stink with a rich quarterback, like a Tyron Taylor type of quarterback. And then they're picking in the top two. And maybe they take C.J. Stroud or Anthony Richardson or somebody like that. So, keeping Tom Brady for a couple more years maybe would have benefited New England. I know, I get it now. They have Drake May, but we don't know about Drake May. New Orleans. Trying to find the replacement for Sean Payton. Um, I'm not a Dennis Allen fan, as you know. He was a bad coach with the Raiders. He has not been a good coach with the Saints. And they could have replaced him with... Somebody awesome, and they they could have been the team to find Brian Dayball or D'Amico Ryan's. And if one of those guys were coaching the Saints, they'd be a playoff team, probably. The New York Giants, the Daniel Jones extension. I know some will say, why not the Daniel Jones pick itself? Listen, the Giants made a lot of mistakes over the past decade plus. You could say Saquon Barkley pick over a quarterback or over Josh Allen. Waiting a year to trade Odell Beckham Jr. 
Although, to be fair, they won the Odell trade because they got Dexter Lawrence out of it, who's a pro bowler. Um, but doubling down on a quarterback that they knew was already not good is my least favorite thing by an NFL team. You saw that with the Jacksonville Jaguars of Bortles. Because they won a playoff game in Minnesota, they thought Daniel Jones earned an extension. And now that hamstruck the franchise and um, it might cost Brian Dayball and Joe Shane their jobs. Signing a quarterback they didn't even pick to an extension. So something that Dave, uh, a Dave Gettleman pick might cost those guys their jobs, which I'm obviously uh, rooting against to happen because I think that both Shane and Dayball are good at their jobs. So, like I said, there's a lot of mistakes the Giants have made, but none, in my opinion, bigger than doubling down on a quarterback that they already knew was no good. They could have still went 6-11 and with Tyrod Taylor the whole year. And they could have let him sign with Atlanta or something like that. The New York Football Jets. Picking Sam Darnold over Josh Allen. Um, Looking back, this was a big mistake. Obviously, Josh Allen being in their division. Um, Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen are obviously the big busts in that draft. And if they took Josh Allen, obviously they don't make the Rodgers trade. And none of this dysfunction would be going on right now. Although there is a little dysfunction in Buffalo. I get it, but... Not to the extent of the Jets. The Philadelphia Eagles signing DeMarco Murray. Yeah, remember DeMarco Murray? Former Cowboy running back who um, was awesome in 2014 and the Eagles go and sign him and turn out to be a big-time flop. And I think that's why they only signed Saquon to a three-year deal because they want DeMarco Murray 2.0. I mean, I think that's on the table for Philadelphia, but I don't know if it's actually going to happen. The Pittsburgh Steelers not trading Antonio Brown sooner. They could have gotten a lot more back than they did for Antonio Brown. I know they had to get rid of him, but they should have traded him sooner. They would have gotten more back. It's kind of like the uh, Texans with... Or, I'm sorry, not the Texans with Watt, with the, the Packers with Aaron Rodgers is what I gave out the example for this. Um, The Seattle's, no, I'm sorry, the San Francisco 49ers. This is the biggest mistake anybody has made over the past decade, and that's trading up and taking Trey Lance. To me, this could cost the 49ers a championship if they don't win in this era with Christian McCaffrey brought in the... Um, Brock Purdy and Debo and this whole group. They originally were supposed to pick at a different number. And they obviously blamed Jimmy Garoppolo for their failures, which wasn't fair. I thought Jimmy Garoppolo did a good job at the Niners. Took him to a Super Bowl, almost took him to another Super Bowl. And then they they found Brock Purdy anyway in the seventh round. So that's what is more telling with the Trey Lance thing. So there's an alternate universe where they could have stayed at 12. And there's so many different players that they could have picked. Including Micah Parsons. If they had him, they would have won a championship. They passed on him. They passed on Rayshon Slater, who would have been opposite of Trent Williams. I'm not counting Najee Harris because they traded for McCaffrey. They passed on Christian Darasaw, who could have helped them. Jalen Phillips would have been big time. Greg Newsom would have helped. Um, Gre- even Gregory, Ru- oh, no, Gregory Russo. Was picked too far, but to the be the big one was Parsons, or they could have um maybe they trade up the six and they take Jalen Waddle 
and how imagine how sick that would have been. Waddle, Ayuk, and Debo. Um, they could have had Penny Sewell. You could have had J. C. Horn or Patrick Sertain. To the um Devonte Smith would have been an odd fit. But yeah, there's a lot of guys they could have taken instead of training off for Trey Lance. Or they could, like I said, they could have done with Miami. They trade up to six and take Jalen Waddle or Sertain or Horn from Carolina. But yeah, there's a lot of guys that would have made a difference on the 49ers over Trey Lance. That's for sure. The Seattle Seahawks, the Jamal Adams trade, this set them back for a while. They gave up two first rounders for Jamal Adams. Who they cut this off season? I know some may say I'm uh, not picking a quarterback and keeping Geno Smith and extending Geno Smith, but I don't think Geno Smith's been that bad. But if Geno Smith was as bad as Daniel Jones last year, then I would have said the Geno Smith extension. But he wasn't that bad. But to the Jamal Adams trade was worse. And they gave up not one, but two first-round picks. And now he's off the team. It's kind of like the Wilson trade in a weird way. Um, The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Rob, Roberto Agoyo pick. They picked the kicker in the second round. Like, you could have picked somebody that could have helped you instead of uh, Roberto Agoyo. Like, that was... And- Even as it was happening. He was an amazing kicker for Florida State. And they traded up for him. That's it was insane as it was happening. And It's even more insane looking back. And there's a lot of guys that the Buccaneers could have had. They could have had um, Unique Ngakwe, Joe Thune, James Bradbury, Kevin Byard, Javon Hargrave. Yeah, they passed up on some good players. The trade up for Roberto Aguayo. The Tennessee Titans trading and Anto- or AJ Brown. I almost said Antonio Brown. AJ Brown. Um, bad trade. Now looking back, um, I know that. Um, and then they ended up getting uh, DeAndre Hopkins, who I don't think is good anymore. Um, and Traylon Burks has not shown yet that he could be a WR one. And uh, AJ Brown is better now than he was on Tennessee. Maybe that's because of the quarterback, but still. That was a bad trade, and he could have just capped them for Will Levis. Um, and then the Washington Commanders, the Landon Collins signing. Again, a free agent signing that was just a huge bust. They signed him away from their rival Giants. And... He signed for six years, eighty-four million, and then he was cut after three years. So that was a bad signing, and obviously a massive overpay as well. So there you have it: the NFL regrets of the decade. Now we'll talk about the news and notes for today. A lot of stuff from the weekend. Um, Donald Trump had a news conference at the Trump Tower about the hush money verdict. Um, Just see it for yourself. I really um, don't have a lot of time to get into that, but that was a big deal. Um, All signs point to Chris Porzingis being ready for the final, so that's good news. For the Celtics. So this is very interesting. The Pelicans to the Fertile Lakers pick. As the Lakers will retain the 17th pick in the draft. 
And the Pelicans, I think, are doing the right thing by taking the big risk with the Lakers being worse next year and the draft being better. I think the Pelicans are doing the right thing. So, how about this? Jared McCain was impersonated as a Snapchat scammer pretended to be him tricking fans for money. Like, what? <laughs> like, that's crazy. Um, Drew Locke downplays his role as he spells out his role to back up Daniel Jones, which he probably is going to be the backup. Um, so this French prospect, or is he, I don't know if he's French or, yes, French guard Nolan Taroy snubs Duke and Arkansas for a French contract. So that's a big loss for college hoops. Um, you Darvish on the injured list as well as Joe Musgrove. Darvish groin, Musgrove elbow. Two huge losses for the San Diego Padres. Alec Manoa on the IL with elbow sprain. And the Blue Jays acquire Ryan Burr from Philly for cash considerations. Jordan Romano is also on the injured list with the right elbow inflation. So two big losses for the Toronto Blue Jays. Baby Gronk flips again. And this is his fifth pledge since May 10th as he commits to playing for Tennessee. Florida lands four-star quarterback Will Griffin as they lock its first commitment for 2026. So that is pretty... Interesting. Um, UFC 302. Um, so, Islam Makachev beats Dustin Poyer by submission in final round to retain lightweight title in UFC 302 main event. And the Jake Paul... Tyson, Mike Tyson fight postponed as it's going to be rescheduled after doctors order Tyson to rest following his ulcer this week. The Kings ex are extending Mike Brown three years, 30 million. So good job by Sacramento for getting that done. And now we'll see Tom Thibodeau potentially get a new deal as Thibs is a virtual certainty to get extension at the market rate this offseason, as he should. A lot of NBA stuff coming out. The Cavs want to keep core players, as they're not very motivated to listen to offers for Mitchell Garland, Mobley, or Allen, which is crazy. And then the Cavs interview Nick's Johnny Bryant and Heat's Chris Quinn. Net center Nick Claxton is likely to get eighty to hundred million dollars as he's expected to stay in Brooklyn amid free agency. That's ridiculous. Eighty to hundred million. The Pistons are parting ways with their GM Troy Weaver. Um, that's not surprising. Um, 76ers want role players back as they're interested in resigning Kyle Lowry, Kelly Oubre Jr., and Nick Batum, who all Um, were parts of their run. Um, Darvin Ham passed on joining the Suns as Coach Bud wanted Ham on his new staff in Phoenix. Um, huh. I think Darvin Ham thinks that he can get a job. Maybe he'll go to Cleveland. Um, Dan Hurley was at UFC 302 as he was sending a message at the event. Blue Jays GM Ross Atkins denies trade buzz as he says moving Vlad Jr. and Boba Chet doesn't make any sense. 
the Buffalo Bills are bringing in Olympic wrestler gold medalist Gable Stevenson after cut for WWE. Interesting. The Vikings are pretty motivated to get a deal done with Justin Jefferson. Lamar misses out on a 75, 750 grand bonus amid absence from OTAs. Yikes. Justin Fields are threat at the goal line as teams expect the Steelers to get a little weird with using Fields near end zone. Huh. There was a uh, brawl in the White Sox Brewers game as Tetchens flared and Tommy Pham was heated. And Pham says that he wasn't having the tough guy hurrah shit today. So the Mets retired Daryl Strawberry's number over the weekend as Daryl says leaving Mets for the Dodgers is his life's biggest regret. Hmm. Aaron Judge got booed at Oracle Park over the weekend. As Giants fans obviously will never forget, they thought they had Aaron Judge when John Heyman tweeted, Arson Judge appears to be headed to the Giants. But John Heyman said, nope, spoke too soon. Next morning, John Paul Morosi reports, Judge is indeed back to the Yankees and the rest is history. And... Now the Yankees have the best back in the baseball, and the Giants are stuck in meter opportunity. So, yeah. Garrett Cole is making a rehab start for the Somerset Patriots. What? That's crazy. On Tuesday. So that's tomorrow. Holy crap. The Mets made some roster moves on Friday. Um... Brett Beatty and Christian Scott to AAA. Um, Luis Torrens acquired from the Yankees. And the team promoted a couple of players. Um, uh, Jose Iglesias and Daniel Nunez. The Commanders cut Brandon McManus amid sexual assault allegations. That's not surprising. The Chiefs had their White House visit over the weekend for the Super Bowl. And Travis Kelsey had some jokes for Joe Biden. Which is not surprising. The WNBA upgraded the foul on Clark as Kennedy Carter's contact changed to flagrant one after review. Hmm. Um. And then finally, um, Amelia Cardoso finally made her debut against the Fever over the weekend. Isaiah Hartenstein may command command a hundred grand or a hundred million as the Knicks can offer a max three or seventy two and a half million in free agency. Jalen Brunson pissed by loss narrative as Brunson doesn't believe injuries were to blame for Knicks losing the Pacers in game seven. He's gonna keep saying that. And Josh Hart trolled Tyrese Halliburton after the Pacers got swept by the Celtics. That doesn't really surprise me. Well, that's, this is really sad. Uh, Drew Gordon passes away at the age of 33. He's the brother of Denver Nuggets player Aaron Gordon. He died in a car crash. Thoughts and prayers to Aaron Gordon and the rest of that family. Uh, Drew's former teammates. Really sad news. Chris Finch packs Carl Anthony Towns to succeed as he 100% believes Towns can help take the Wolves where we want to go. 
Um, Joe Missoula rips feud rumors as he made it clear that there's no tension between Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And Joe Missoula says no stopping Luka as he knows his team has a tough job ahead against the Mavs. Jason Tatum talks about when he was teammates with Kyrie. And how about this? Giannis is going to play in the FIBA qualifying tournament for Greece. Rasheed Wallace says that the Pistons would have beat the shit out of the 2017 Warriors. And of course, Draymond had something to say about that. And an MJ card sold for $2.9 million. One-on-one -on -one autographed card sets new all-time record at an auction. All right, so last but not least, my best bet of the day, brought to you by FanDuel. Um, so, there's not a lot of stuff on tonight. I like doing is taking the under in a game at Coors Field. So I'm going to go under 10.5 in Reds Rockies. The Rockies offense stinks. I don't know why it's 10.5. Andrew Rapid's pretty good. So I maybe this is 7 1 Reds. So I'm going under 10.5 minus a 10 for my best bet of the day. So there you have it for the show. I'll be back tomorrow with MLB regrets for each team over the past decade. And obviously all the recapping and looking ahead to everything come tomorrow. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.